Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. I've got Bitcoin up here on the daily chart, guys, and it looks like the bloodbath is continuing Bitcoin right now. Uh, as you can see, it's trading at $22,300 per coin. So on the daily, uh, we have seen a cascading of bearish price movement uh, to the downside. We did see uh, Bitcoin go as low as roughly $20,000 which is, um, for all intents and purposes, basically reaching its former all-time high that it set back in late 2017. You guys can see uh, the price did come down uh, just in and around here. And uh, it uh, pretty much, it, well, I mean, almost touched on this chart here. We can see the Bitcoin recorded high is actually 19,600. But, you know, the market is just continuing to implode on itself and uh, just looking at XRP right now you can see XRP did uh, reach 30 cents I think it may have even gone below yeah a low of 29.3 right now though XRP is up to uh, 31.1 so did rebound a little bit and um, you know just to kind of take stock in what is going on right now markets around the world are falling this is the S&P 500 uh, on the daily, we can see S&P 500 uh, not open yet, although uh, even in pre-market, it is looking like it is going to open uh, roughly around where it closed yesterday. Uh, the DJI is uh, in the same boat, three big bearish days in a row. Uh, and the NASDAQ, let's bring up the NASDAQ real quick here. NASDAQ here also seeing some bearish momentum. So, you know, it's not just the crypto market where we're experiencing this, whereas before, you know, we would see Bitcoin bull runs, Bitcoin bear markets, and they were um, pretty insular. I mean, we didn't really see those correlations to broader markets, but um, now it's looking to be a little different because cryptocurrency is getting so regulated because now there's a drive for regulators to regulate this thing. We know it's going to be the next big asset class. A lot of people are finding this is a great opportunity uh, to purchase some of those cryptocurrencies, um, you know, to beef up your portfolios, whether it's adding more XRP to your portfolio or something else. I wanted to bring you guys this. There are three stages of a bear market. So for those of you guys who have never been in a bear market, you probably want to listen up here. We just entered stage two. So I've been through one of these myself. 2018 was not fun, let me tell you. Um, but here is uh, some insight here from Yano. Stage one, the unwind, the excitement and greed from the bull market still exists. Many narratives pop up for weeks at a time. Assets still have floors though. Valuations are cut, but companies don't make the tough decisions, kill products, layoffs, etc. Everything seems all right. Stage one doesn't feel like a bear market. It feels like prices have pulled back to realistic valuations. Investors continue allocating. Builders keep building. In general, life is good. Only the weak hands sell. Stage two is where Yano thinks we are in right now, is forced capitulation. This is where it gets ugly, guys. Narratives die. Prices fall 90%, then another 90%. Layoffs across the board. So we have been hearing about layoffs already happening uh, in some cryptocurrency uh, companies like uh, Coinbase, even some big ones. Mainstream media and cynics rise up in stage two. They laugh and shout, I told you. Uh, Luna sent us into stage two. In stage two, diamond hands become four sellers. They sell not because they want to, but because they have to. Celsius doesn't want to sell. They might have to sell, though. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about Celsius, guys, in a sec. There will be more funds, companies, and individuals like Celsius. So pay attention to who else is going to default. Um, in stage two, any bounce will be immediately sold into. The dead cat bounce. Companies that need high token prices will be crushed. Founders that buy their own tokens to sustain their projects, they'll also get crushed. The lower the prices go, the louder the bears get. The louder the bears, the lower the prices go. So it's kind of a vicious cycle, as he points out here. In stage two, prices crash violently. Excitement is replaced by anger. And so this is what Yano is saying. This is where he's saying we are in right now for the crypto market. Let me just pull up a price range tool here. Bitcoin did crash about almost 70% at this point. So now it is back up to about 68% correction. We could still even see it go further down. Let's bring up XRP. You can see XRP is uh, has corrected 84% roughly. So this is, you know, a prime buying opportunity, I think, for a lot of you guys that got into the market, uh, whether it was 2020 or 2021, um, you know, because I know a lot of you guys are relatively new and may have not have uh, happened to have been through a, uh, a, uh, a bear market yet. But stage three, this is the last and final hopeless stage, bottomless exhaustion. After max pain comes max exhaustion. 
There are no bounces, there are no narratives. Prices consolidate sideways or slowly move down. At the bottoms, anger is replaced by silence which is even more terrifying in a lot of ways. During stage three, you'll want to walk away. Regulations will kick us while we're down. Your favorite Twitter DGens will go quiet. Web2 investors will quietly stop allocating. Talented builders will leave. Companies will shut down. You'll question every assumption you had. And guys, this is the hardest time. I gotta say, this is the absolute hardest time to buy uh, anything, whether it's cryptocurrency or stocks or what have you. I mean, this is a cryptocurrency related channel. So, I mean, I focus mainly on cryptocurrency here, but I, I remember this. Um, let me just bring up Bitcoin real quick. I remember this. This was December 2018 for a lot of us when Bitcoin fell off this cliff. I don't know who was here at that point. Bitcoin essentially fell off this cliff. We thought, okay, this is the bottom because it's been ranging for quite a while. And then, boom, another correction that really just took us right at the end of 2018 after an entire bearish year. Um, and this is where I bought up a lot of my Bitcoin, but this is where the narrative does go sour. Stage three is the toughest to survive. If you're a company, do whatever it takes to get through it. If you're a builder, stay interested. Find other builders. If you're an investor, develop your own thesis. Take bets on people you believe in. Don't lose sight of the big picture. We're building an open, permissionless world. It will take decades, not years. Close the computer, zoom out, go for a walk. Just don't give up. So just wanted to bring that uh, to you guys today just because I know it's probably not feeling good for a lot of you guys uh, who may have just gotten into the crypto space over the last couple of years. Just remember though that this is a bigger picture scenario. Uh, the Celsius situation also had an effect on this. This from Jack Newald here, the Celsius blow up explained huge sectors of crypto are imploding and crypto unicorns might be coming down with it. Luna was the first, but now $10 billion giant Celsius is facing insolvency and even bankruptcy. This goes into the Celsius story, so let me get into this. In the last few years, we've seen the rise of so-called centralized DeFi companies that custody and manage crypto on behalf of investors. They take your money in crypto and promise you fixed interest rates and then put it on chain and use it in DeFi to earn a yield. While they advertise their services like that of a bank, the service is almost more like a hedge fund or asset manager. These strategies have some risk involved and require supervision. And how do they make their money? Well, interesting question. Originating loans of institutions and individuals, uh, keeping whatever profits are left after running strategies on behalf of their customers. So if they advertise 5% on USDC deposits, then swap that USDC to make 20% on UST, they can keep 15%. And Celsius did phenomenally well throughout 2020 and 2021, reaching a valuation of $10 billion and recently raising $400 million. The only issue though, they kind of manage their funds like DGENs. So this was a sophisticated Ponzi-ish type scam where, you know, they were managing all this money that uh, they accumulated over the bull run. And like many cryptocurrency companies did not manage it properly. And uh, now they are paying big time for it. So part one, the Luna collapse. The Luna collapse shook the industry and made waves in mainstream media, maybe the biggest wealth destruction event in crypto. And Celsius was involved. Luna promised 20% interest on USD pegged stablecoins, making it a super popular product advertised as risk free. But when markets began to shake, the mechanism to hold the token at $1 failed, leading to a death spiral and the failure of a $40 billion protocol. But as Luna collapsed, many speculated about big institutional players losing their shirts on their holdings. And Celsius, who promised strong rates on stablecoins, was exposed to the collapse by holding maybe up to $500 million in USDT. And that's customers' money that got lost. But they had a buffer, at least hopefully they did. Part two to this, Lido staked Ethereum. For Ethereum deposits, Celsius promised 6 to 8% in interest, with a lot of it likely earned from staking rewards on a proof of stake Ethereum beacon chain. The biggest issue with this is that the assets held on the Ethereum beacon chain are completely locked up. You can't unstake for now. Crypto protocol Lido solved this problem by creating a liquid derivative asset called Lido staked ETH or uh, STETH. While STETH has often traded at a one-to-one -one ratio, it's not pegged, meaning it doesn't have to trade at one-to-one. -one. But Celsius kind of counted on uh, this holding, this uh, Ethereum type holding on its one-to-one uh, -one ratio because it needs to match liabilities. In a bull market, that worked out. 
But with a liquidity crisis in bear market, the STETH to ETH ratio, technically not a peg, began to slide. And so Jack here has uh, attached some supporting material if you guys are interested in reading this. The unwinding though, Celsius has likely failed to isolate risk. They might have taken USDC and held it in UST, Luna stablecoin, or taken Ethereum and held it in STETH. So when all of crypto drops and all users want their funds back, all Celsius users feel the pinch. It's all the same pool of money. Celsius is facing a liquidity crisis, one in which prices that are spiraling downwards make it harder and harder to match liabilities, so they shut down withdrawals. There are about $10 billion in customer assets on Celsius and about $1.5 billion accounted for in Celsius's various wallets. So in terms of matching customer funds to liquid assets, there's a clear mismatch. And that loss in confidence inspires more and more people to withdraw, which causes people to lose confidence, etc. So you guys are seeing how this is becoming a snowball effect in crypto. So one, there's about $400 million staked on the Ethereum beacon chain. There's another 400 million uh, leverage in Maker Protocol, which has been alarmingly close to liquidation, although Celsius keeps topping up their position. It's important to note that these positions are often hunted by institutional trading desks. Firms will actively try to push price down to get these big positions liquidated that make money on the trade when the forced liquidation goes through. As for the rest of the money, who knows where it is? Maybe it's lent out on uh, centralized exchanges and everything is kosher. Maybe it's not. And how does Celsius solve the problem? Well, as I said, it's possible that they're totally solvent. They have enough assets, but just illiquid. If that's the case, they can try to negotiate with other institutions in Wales to uh, offload big, illiquid positions for a discount. If their assets don't match liabilities outright, they're kind of screwed and will require external funding, a loan, or acquisition, i.e. if Nexo decides to uh, take them over, or they'll just go bankrupt, in which case all of their depositors are outright screwed. So guys, I bring up these points because... Um, you know, uh, it sounds as though that it could be manipulated and the big guys are now moving in. John Deaton bringing this up and the final chapter of the plan is finally revealed. JP Morgan now wants to bring trillions of dollars of tokenized assets to DeFi. No, I'm not joking about this, and John Deaton, I think, hits the nail on the head. The final chapter of the plan is revealed, so moving into the regulated world, JP Morgan hopes it has found a way for decentralized finance developers to leverage the yield-generating potential of non-crypto assets. Speaking to Coindesk at Consensus, Tyrone Loban, head of Onyx Digital Assets at JP Morgan, described in detail the bank's institutional-grade DeFi plans and highlighted how much value in tokenized assets is waiting in the wings. So, you know, we've got the big players here. Obviously, they have a vested interest in getting into this market, but they have been wanting to get into it as, it's, uh, as it gets regulated. We are seeing this demolition. Now, I don't know if this was just pure greed and uh, these crypto companies imploded on their own because of that, or if this market was quietly controlled to disintegrate because of outlying influences by the powers that be. Okay, so we also have Stuart Alderati here slamming the SEC. This is kind of a side thing. Obviously, we know about the Ripple SEC lawsuit. And Stuart Alderati, uh, Ripple's in-house counsel, he just wrote an article for Forbes stating, you know, the SEC is trying to bulldoze and bully and bankrupt crypto innovation in the U.S. in the name of expanding its own regulatory territory. So, you know, when we start seeing this kind of thing, it makes you wonder how close could this be to truth? Is there some kind of external forces maybe, uh, you know, helping along, even if they're not completely responsible for it, helping along the controlled manipulation uh, to see prime examples like the Celsius example essentially help bulldoze the market. Well, Stuart Alderati, uh, he goes in, he's saying, uh, by bringing enforcement actions or threats of potential enforcement, the SEC intends to bully, bulldoze, and bankrupt crypto, as I mentioned. Uh, another quote down here, like a hammer wanting everything to be a nail. The SEC is keeping everything murky, so it can argue every crypto is a security. Uh, and I don't have to get into this into detail because we know about the uh, Ripple Labs case. Stuart Alderati uh, tweeted this out. And again, the Forbes article is linked in this uh, in this tweet. And I'll link it also in the description of the video. All things that should get us thinking, Stefan Hubert bringing up this tweet. Now, he's just laughing at this statement here. He uh, retweeted out, uh, or rather, yeah, he retweeted it out. But he also uh, posted a screen grab here. This is Eleanor Turret from Fox Business. Industry sources with knowledge of the matter tell me the SEC has sent letters to several crypto exchanges inquiring about the lack of insider trading safeguards. So isn't that 
coincidental, considering what is happening now precisely at this moment in time. The crypto market collapsing, Celsius obviously playing a big part in that, Luna about a month ago also uh, a prime example of why we're starting to see this unravel, and it almost seems to me like this is a bit of a domino effect that was kind of maybe a little pre-orchestrated, maybe nudged along by some big money. Okay, so here's what Stefan Hubert posted. He posted uh, that Eleanor Turret tweet, but also posted this screen grab from 2017. Hilarious. The Wall Street Journal published this article way back then. No law needed on insider trading. This is a statement made by, at that time, SEC Chief Jay Clayton. And as you guys can see, um, the SEC fiscal year initiation uh, from 2012 all the way to 2020, you can see their insider trading record is impeccable, 0% across the board. So they're saying no laws needed yet. We are now seeing the SEC go after crypto exchanges, asking about details on insider trading safeguards. XRP Crypto Wolf bringing this article up. The SEC investigates crypto exchanges as the market crashes. So the U.S. Security and Exchange Commission has sent out letters to several crypto exchanges asking for details on insider trading safeguards. The SEC seeks to protect investors after the crypto market crash on Monday led to more than $1 billion in liquidations, with Bitcoin and Ethereum diving more than 15 and 17% respectively. Fox Business journalist Eleanor Turret announced in a tweet on the 14th that the SEC has sent out letters, and uh, I, I read that tweet for you guys. As many insider trading cases surfaced in the crypto market, the SEC might be looking for further regulations to protect investors. At least this is what they claim. Previously, the SEC had asked crypto exchanges to register and report financial information. The SEC chair, Gary Gensler, had also attacked crypto exchanges for trading against customers. Moreover, amending the definition of an exchange for purposes of the Security Exchange Act. Again, guys, I do not think this timing is coincidental. Uh, you know, especially considering, and this was big, especially considering this post by John Deaton, the fact that JP Morgan is now looking at bill, uh, bringing not just billions, trillions of dollars of tokenized assets to decentralized finance. All things that make you go, hmm. So what do we do as investors? What's our best line of defense? Well, um, if you guys are already in the crypto market and you're hodling at this moment in time, Whatever you do, don't panic sell into this. Now, I mean, if you need the money to pay your rent, maybe you've invested more than you can afford to lose. Well, then that's a different story. Everybody's got their own story and uh, I can't tell you what to do. This is not financial advice by any means. Uh, I'm just letting you guys know what I'm planning on doing because yes, I did not sell my cryptocurrency at the top. I, I sold some positions, but I did not sell everything. So I'm still holding a large stack of XRP, still waiting for those targets. My cost average for XRP though is at uh, 22 cents. So, I mean, I, and I've got a lot of XRP already. If I were to just put a line here, just showing you guys where my cost average is for XRP, I'm right here. So, um, until we collapse and the price goes down roughly 88.6%, I'm uh, still above water technically. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on, uh, you know, some of the positions, even if you can't, you know, invest a lot of money at this moment in time, slowly scale in down cost average. Algorand's going to be one of those positions that I acquire more of. I think I'll likely boost up my position in Cardano. A lot of people on here, uh, you know, looking into quant as well. I have not been huge on quant. I'm still learning more about this particular cryptocurrency. I know some of the XRP community very interested in this particular project. So those are just some coins. Again, this is a spec market. So, I mean, I personally like the coins with the utility. You can essentially purchase anything at this moment in time though. The sky is the limit. Just uh, try not to get scared off. We are in stage two of this bear market and it might get even worse before it gets better. That's just my opinion, but I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.